Skateboarding in the shop, right? But welcome everybody. It is Friday, uh, the 22nd of March, and John has informed me it is officially spring now. So uh, we uh, have a fairly slow week in the shop <coughs> this week. Uh, a lot of people were on spring break, so it's been quiet without John here. So he's back today. I'm glad he's back. Um, so what do I have going on uh, back here? Last week, I think uh, I had just had some plywood delivered for some cabinets I was building for my wife uh, for our office at home. And back behind here, I have, the bases are now at home. Um, so I have a pile of uppers in here that I have been kind of working on. Um, and I'll be hopefully finishing up and getting out of here uh, this weekend, uh, but these are going to be uppers above on my built-in desk and the three lower bases uh, are at home But to break all this down, it was kind of funny and if you guys follow us on Facebook uh, You may have seen last week. I posted a picture of using this guy um, This is the new I think it's new recently released Craig uh, Cutting system. So basically this guy is a table that has a track saw, come on, uh, a track saw attached to it, and it assists you in breaking down sheets of plywood. And I kind of used this guy this weekend to break down all those sheets of plywood. And this thing's actually pretty sweet. I say actually, not, I mean, the Craig Tool stuff is really good uh, normally, anyways, but this thing's pretty cool. Um, it features a fence that's stuck to the table with a couple hinges. You could slip your sheet of plywood in there, drop the track down, and make your cut with a plunge saw. Kids are My kids are watching. Hey guys! Hey Fletcher and Henry. Um, but uh, you can then cut your sheets of plywood with the track saw attached. There's a built-in rule here that you can use to set stops. Um, you can cut up to I'm going to say up to 48 inches. It might be a little bit longer with those stops. Um, so it's pretty cool. I broke down, I think I ordered seven sheets of plywood, and I ended up using six of them. And I broke all those down, probably all told in about an hour, into uh, probably 60 parts or so. So it was pretty sweet. It, uh, it worked really quickly, and I was pretty impressed with it. Um, it is fairly expensive. We had somebody comment on Facebook on my post that I made with this. Uh, that it's pricey, and it is. Um, I think the entire cutting system with the saw retails at $8.99. Now there are some accessories you can add to it that makes it a little bit more expensive. Um, but $8.99, it's not meant as a replacement for your table saw though. So I think this guy probably would really um, be good for somebody that is going on site, traveling and breaking out a lot of plywood. So somebody like a finished carpenter or a trim carpenter, I think this guy would be pretty sweet for. Um, somebody that uh, needs to move it around and like, like seeing it at wheels, it stands up, it's, it's not, uh, doesn't take up a large footprint. Um, so if you actually don't even have room for a table saw, um, this guy is a really good option. So that is what I'm working on, maybe well, next weekend, hopefully, my wife's office is done. She's going to expect it to be done. So I won't have these in here, but I'll have something going on next week. So let's go ahead and head over to, well, let's go to Dylan, because Chris is not here. He's somewhere, but let's see what Dylan is going on. Chris is in hiding. Chris is in hiding. Yeah. Witness protection. Yes. Next time you see him, I'll have that blurred yes. over his face. How's it going, everybody? Uh, Dylan Baker here with Woodsmith Magazine. Um, I think last week I'd started talking about the shaker boxes that I will be um, completing for an upcoming project. Um, I believe I had my forms all built that kind of represent the three different sizes that I'll do. They kind of function as like a kind of like Russian nesting dolls, so they will actually be able to set 
um, within one another. But again, it just gives you a little bit of a variety of, uh, you know, ultimately what you want to what you want to use them for. So I built those, and then since last week, there's a few couple other things I had going on. So when you go to actually steam your strips, so I've got my for my larger size here, my number five. Uh, I've got my full strip for um, the shaker box. So after they're steamed and wrapped around the form, you actually tack them together with these uh, brass tacks. Um, and that's what actually holds the form together. And then once you have those tacked in, you remove them off the, the uh, form and then you uh, replace them with these uh, shapers here. So you put one in the bottom and then actually one in the top. So you get two for every size and then you actually allow them to dry like that. So it's just kind of acting as like a, uh, uh, kind of like a rib for a boat, just kind of keep it stretched out so it um, adheres to the form in which it was stretched. So, uh, Lo Logan just grabbed a couple of the actual tacks. They're those really, are itty bitty. They're very, very small. So, actually, when you drive those in, so you'll have pre drilled holes. This really isn't put together right now, but basically, I'm making kind of a poor man's anvil. So, I'll put my form over the top of this and I'll drive those tacks down onto this rigid surface here. And it will actually plume the other end to actually act as like a rivet and peen them over, peen them over, and hold them in place. So um, I'm actually in the process of doing that. I just cut my piping about 10 minutes ago, and I'll get a two by four and get that mounted, and you'll just be able to basically clamp it to your bench. Um, this is actually the steam box I built uh, a couple days ago for the actual strips. They're a little bit longer than my longest strip. Um, you know, you want to maximize the space as much as you can. There's no sense in making something like this twice as large for pieces that are this small, so you can kind of heat it up to temperature. So basically, I've got a uh, pump over there filled with water. Um, it heats up to a little over 200 degrees, and then depending on the thickness of material that you're bending, I think it's about an hour for every inch. Well, you saw these strips, they're you know less than a sixteenth of an inch thick, so we're looking at probably 10 to 15 minutes. I'm gonna start experimenting with those and kind of see Again, time-wise, kind of get it narrowed down, so um, we kind of got it down to a science. And these are white oak? Yeah, so the ones I have right now are just quarter on white oak. Um, as I mentioned earlier, that's for the larger, the number five. I've got a number three here, and then these are the really small ones, the number one here. So they'll wrap around the smallest form. And I've got plenty of these, so realistically, I'll probably experiment with the smaller ones more just to kind of get um, not only the variety in the size, but I'll probably have three, three different sizes and three different styles. Um, again, just to give the editors options for you know what we ultimately want to use for the magazine. You know, we're, we're satisfying more than one person around here is basically <laughs> what I'm trying to say. So not well, just my personal taste. Well, and you know, I guess theoretically, the smallest box would be the hardest to bend, anyways. True. Right? Because it has the tightest radius. So sure. You know, if you get the smallest one to work, biggest should be probably easy, easier, right? The large ones working. Is <laughs> hopefully not 100, percent but probably close, right? Yeah. Yes, yep. we have to hope. So. Um, that's what I have going on for that. I know in the weeks past we've been kind of going over the cradle. Um, I was talked about how I was having some struggles with just kind of figuring out design for that. So the full full size prototype hasn't changed. Again, I think initially that was just for me to kind of get a sense of the, the scale of it, um, seeing what I was working with size wise, and then um, ultimately what the interior space is going to be. So. I do have a three dimension or three D drawing or CAD drawing I worked on here, and I finally settled on a uh, side panels for my cradle. Um, as you can see here, they're just a traditional frame and panel uh, with mortise and tenon. They are actually just straight, so they're not actually following that curvilinear path on the outsides of the cradle form there. Um, just to kind of again expedite it, give it a little bit different look. It is a little bit of a departure from all the kind of organic lines that are going on, on the outside here, but um, I think it's kind of a good marriage. And then on the actual panels here, I've got these little cutouts. Um, they actually end up well being two boards, but the way they look right now is they're kind of an elliptical cutout, and there's like basically a V groove that runs down the center, and then an eighth inch chamfer to kind of tie it all together just as an edge treatment. So um, right now, uh, in that process, I've got actually it modeled. I've got um, the drawings done. So I do need to figure out the locking mechanism. So if you wanted to actually have it static and not rock, um, I need to work on that and then material selection. Um, and once I figure that out, I'll have get everything ordered and then we'll start building it. And you know, again, sometimes we run into problems um, in the building process, which is why we do it. So it's things are subject to change, minor things. Nothing I think aesthetically drastic is going to change. So. Um, but again, that's kind of another part of working through the problem. So that's what I have going on right now. I will be gone next week, but we will still be here for Facebook Live. So tune in and uh, check on with progress with the cradle.
and as well as the shaker boxes. Thank you. All right. Let's see what Mark has a couple things. He has a couple things going on. Come on over here. <clears throat> okay, my next project for issue 244 is the John designed table saw workstation. Can you see that? So this little area here is going to house the the contractor size table saw. There's going to be a router table here and then this guy here there's going to be a flip top on a pivot for the uh, planer. So working on the, the parts and pieces for that at the moment and that's coming together. So hopefully we'll have something assembled by next week. On to my lunch break project is my chair. The Dylan design campaign chair. Finally got some stain on it and got some finish on it. Happy how it turned out. See how the grain's popping on the cherry. So, got some leather cut. So, got to get that all trimmed up and put in place. So, next week, that should be in there and the chair should be complete. Ready for the auction for the, the gala that it's going to. So, that's what I've got going on over here. Well, I was see going, next week. Yeah, I was going to see if Steve wanted to come out here and show us. He was working on some clamps yesterday, two days ago. But I don't see him over there. Well, there's a handle. Let's go. Let's go snoop on his bench. He's he's acting like he's on the phone right now. I don't think he probably is actually on a phone call. I think he's just trying to avoid the Facebook Live that we <laughs> forced him into. Um, I don't actually no. So this is a handle of a prototype of a shop made clamp that we're working on. Uh, that uh, Steve has actually been working on. Um, and they're, they're kind of cool. He was showing me these the other day. Um, these are the, uh, the initial drawings for it. And basically what it is, is it's a set of, uh, I say a set, it's two jaws of a deep reach clamp. So it is uh, an arm that you would be able to slide over a two by four and create a, a clamp that has a deep throat on it, right? So it has large clamping area um, and you can expand it out to however long two by four you have. So it's kind of a cool uh, concept. Um, I was hoping he had one over here, but he just has the handle. I'm guessing it's probably nah. I'm, no. This is just no. I think this is all parts. So all parts. he he didn't throw it away though, so it might be in the spray booth potentially. Hmm. So, but anyways, um, so I think that is basically what we have going on in the shop this week. Um, make sure if you guys are interested, we have our. Uh, was it the Q&A, the tell all, uh, ask all with the Woodsmith Shop cast um, in April. What is it? April 18th. April 18th Becky's telling me. Um, so Chris, Phil, and myself will be uh, there answering all your questions. Uh, you guys are welcome to ask us anything about what we do in the shop, what we uh, like to work on, um, what our favorite breakfast is, all that sort of jazz. So. Uh, make sure to stop, sign up for that. That is at woodsmithshop.com slash seminars. Uh, and I guess that's what we got. So until next time, see you guys.